Alright, so uh, I'm about to kick this off, take these caps off. Big shout out to my boy Albert picking, those, picking up that uh, BBS tool for me. Thank you, brother. So the uh, wheels are off, it's up on jack stands, all around, secured. All four, and make sure you put the bolts in a safe place. Hey, um, got the hub out, you definitely need a 36 millimeter cup. Uh, got the two struts out. Um, up next is the uh, control arms. I was gonna go ahead and uh, order these brake shields, but I have since uh, decided um, against that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up. They're in decent shape. One of the worst, absolute worst things to deal with right now is this. It's hard to see right here. Is the screw for the. The axle here for the uh so sorry the lower control so arm. these nuts are as hard as people say they are to get to you can really see it there i have it mostly out there so I'm about to go back in now try to finish that it's extremely tedious there you have it i did end up having to pick one of these up um it's the only way to get this out and this is a 22 millimeter um flare nut wrench right here this worked wonders it's the per perfect length and um yeah i the other thing is um do not release the bolts leave it up there leave it let, let it remain in place so that because what happens is if you break this loose and then you start spinning it this will start spinning so this is in this new one is in um to leave this loose until i put the control arm in um now i'm about to do this uh tie rod in and uh just a quick tip here what I do is, um, I basically use a Sharpie marker. You can use whatever you want, just mark off where the threads are. So, I've gone ahead and um, mounted the control arm. Uh, again, Nightmare Bolt is done. Uh, it's a very short little quarter turns, but you'll get it there. Uh, this is mounted. Here, like I said, I marked the other one, and then you just have to count the, the splines there. This side is done now. Um, time to move on to the uh, to the fun stuff. So, gotta make sure you take off all of the fittings. And then you're gonna reuse this on the display. out of the way. So we want to do this. So I did clean these and paint them with dust shields. And also on this here it looks like there's some finishing material here I have to clean up. Alright, so this hole here wasn't finished. It wasn't properly finished. So what I'm doing right now is um, I had to tap it using Harper Freight uh, bits. And then I'm going to use one of these tools that I have. It's a uh, tap and wrench set. And I believe I have the correct one here, which is this one. This one right here. It's gonna be one of these two. All right, so I confirmed with Victor that it was definitely a, a raw piece that possibly they didn't get all the shavings out. So he's gonna be keeping closer tabs on his quality control before sending out these components. All right, so the bolts are all in. As you saw, I tapped. Use some Loctite on this one. So we're good to go. Let's get that bearing on there. All right, so let's get this bearing on. Like I said, I've already put some grease on there. All right, so now once the bearing is on, I'm supposed to put the, uh, the nut. So now, the bearing's down, and I'll go ahead and get the 
that so yeah. all right so this also requires to get torqued down but i'll do that once it's on the vehicle and on the ground So this isn't listed anywhere. Um, however, I don't like the metal to metal aspect of how that that um, that bag is gonna go in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut this. I'm trying to take this all back apart. It's worth the effort now. Make your way around. Let's get these on. I think one of the two goes up here. Let's try this again. Today. Came with the this hardware. Not really sure what this is for, but I guess we'll figure it out. And um yeah. Decent, good looking. Um they're definitely flat top, so it should work great on my airbags. So let's see, let's set them up. You can see camera plates in and this is in and um so I'm gonna have to the one thing I'm gonna say is do not tighten up your um your tie rod ends because as you can see this is off that other one is straight so i'm gonna have to turn that in so i have to figure out the, the camber once i put the uh the wheels on so i'm not the camber the, the the all four corners uh, the bags are done so now what i'm working on is to run the wiring harness from the battery all the way to the back so that's in a convertible if this were a hard top or a four door the battery would be back there Alright, so I've kind of custom made my own grommet here and uh, there's a floor plug which I drilled out the center and then I'm gonna finish pulling them out on the other side. So it's not being pinched or anything. I'm gonna make sure that this clearances are 100%. Behind that speaker grill, I'll take this, this off and it's gonna run all the way through here and up through here and then out to the back. And, okay, so I ran the wire here along this uh, the panel here and you got to leave enough slack so that you know when you put the seat in it contours and I'm actually gonna make sure that it's completely flush against the the sides there um, the other thing I did was I created that grommet you don't sell them that large I'm actually using a, uh, a drill bit and f uh, floor plugs um, and last but not least I sprayed a little bit of green paint on there just you don't want to leave any exposed metal after you you cut through box is gonna you get some velcro it's gonna sit here under the e-brake and it comes up about yay high which if i'm sitting here it's more than enough for me to control it yay high um it's a very stiff cable so i mean i have enough to run it to the front but it doesn't make sense because that's like a very natural location for it and there's plenty of space for the e-brake runs through there out of through that hole there and then the holes in the rear luckily were larger and there you have it in the connector okay all right so i've begun to run the line so this line is going to end up here somewhere i may even tilt the bag backwards but you want to make sure you give yourself enough slack and that there's enough room so that you can pinch it the it's not i don't know if they're all this way but it's not an easy line to maneuver it's pretty stiff so yeah like i said give yourself plenty of slack and don't see coming following the break the line down here give yourself enough um don't fasten any of these down until all the lines are ran i ran it up through here and then now it's gonna run back here and then right in through that grommet right there 
All right, so the uh, my son came through today. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> the tail end. And he helped me do the uh, the two rear lines, which is much appreciated. But now, um, so I'm running equal lines to the front, unlike the diagram I got from Victor, because I want the, when it, air out, when it airs out, I want it to come down simultaneously. And if you make them equal line, equal length, then you can do that. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll use some of these and some of these, which I had to run out to go get to fasten the line all along this edge. The other side was easy because I had the brake lines over there. So I was able to use wire ties on this side. I don't, so I gotta get creative. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so uh, lines in, the ran at least to the front. Um, I use those right there to hold them onto the body, pass them to the body. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, um, I think I shared with you guys that I'm not gonna worry about the uh, presentation layer until after the fact, until after everything's mounted and I know it's functional. From here back, not from the hole, but from where that natural bend is on the, on the hose. So I have to come back six, seven inches. All right, so I've identified the two different lines. The ones with tape are the ones for the rear lines. I've uh, put some holes in there for now. Like I said, I'm not worried about the aesthetic of this yet. So I'm a noob, I'm probably not the best person to be giving advice about this, but I'm gonna share with you um, basically what Victor told me and I'll share with you basically how to set this three gallon tank up. Um, I was thinking about going a five gallon tank, but that means that my compressor may be running longer. So it's, it's a balance. So I'm gonna see how this works out. Not then, I'll, I'll get a second tank or, or I'll get a five gallon tank. In any case, um, just explain this real quick. So this one right here is for the, um, pressure sensor. And this is what tells the pump to turn on when it has to turn on, right? This one is to feed the air to the manifold, right? So. Mind you, I'm just mocking this off real quick. You do need the thread sealer. This one here, you can either put a gauge on, and then here is where the tank screws into. So again, all of these valves, when you put them in, you gotta use the thread sealer. Now getting into this, and uh, in with some instructions. Uh, looks like some tools, USB cable. I do not know what this is. Maybe double-sided tape of some sort. Instructions and the actual sensor. And as you can see, these are labeled. Uh, RL, FL, FR, RR. So as you can see, tie up there. All right, let's get these on. These are on now. All right, so the sensors are on now. That'll let me know, hopefully it'll let me know how it's gonna inflate. So I just have to get a USB to a uh, uh, cigarette lighter adapter. Eventually I'm gonna hardwire this in. So let's see how that's going. So, power it up like it was supposed to. Um, put the fuse in. Put a lot of fuse right here. Fuse tap actually it's called right there. Putting it down. You see it's not pinching it or anything. I've gotta fasten all of this. Um, really should have the car running, but I'm in a garage. A couple new things that I introduced. Um, I put this gauge on here so that I can um, monitor the tank pressure. So I wanna see if I'm having any leakage between here, out through there, and into this feed. All right, so I picked up some new fittings. Um, to an actual hydraulic shop for these. Well, I was waiting for some upgraded fittings. I actually spoke to Victor and, uh, you know, again, step one, get it all working. Then step two is, uh, you know, then you make it pretty. So right now I'm still in the phase of getting it all working. So I was waiting for the G1A fittings for the bags and Victor told me, take the fittings out, take them all out, wash them with soap, soapy water, 
dry them, clean them, make sure the surface is completely yeah, clean. He was right, all this, this was dirty. I put all five new valves in and uh, fittings in, the push fittings, uh, those are high-end fittings. And I got rid of all the additional leaks. So right now I just did a quick test, uh, sprayed everything down. So you're gonna need some soapy water like this. It's gonna be your best friend, man, when you're getting this together. Next step is let's, let's get some, some wheels on here and uh, let's get it off the jack stands. And let's do a test overnight and see if it holds air. So she's uh, uh, right now. I'm in a garage, so I don't want to intoxicate myself here. But as you can see, she's uh, somewhat aired up. Four hours and um, she looks like she held there so let's find out so this thing's a loves to beep but it works very well there we go it did so the 59 54 in the front 51 52 in the back no. Let's do a quick test. That is new. 